Climate change can be a huge problem for Alaskan fisheries, but little information is known on how long it could take to affect the salmon. This problem can put many fisheries out of business, which most Alaskan communities depend on. Here are some of the many people that have shared their knowledge with ideas that predict what will happen to the salmon in the future and what we can do to prevent it. Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Foy. I work for uh, NOAA, National Marine Fisheries Service, the Alaska Fisheries Science Center. I am the director of the Kodiak Laboratory. Okay, my name is Stosh Anderson. I'm Seth Patterson. <laughs> well, you're both skippers on this vessel from time to time. I need to see here and you and part of it. This is the Kessel. Climate change affects fisheries in a number of different ways. So we've, for years we've been looking at the effects of temperature on fisheries, animals. So the real question is, what is the effect of temperature and ocean acidification on the animal or on the species? And then we think about it at the population levels. So in 1978 through 1980, we had what we call, we call a regime shift in Alaska. That change, that decadal change, happened so uh, fast and it was so large that it created, it changed us from a shrimp and crab dominated system to a ground fish dominated system. Halibut, arrowtooth flounder, cod, pollock, and those are our fisheries that we have now. So because of that you see changes in the availability of, of fishing. Just certain areas I've seen crab populations come back. Like There's more and more every year in certain areas. So I think the uh there's, there's direct effects and indirect effects. I think right now probably the indirect effects are more substantial than the direct effects. I think the direct effects will come in time when we have more depleted stocks. And it's not just crab, it's the basic uh, base of the food chain, it's the little crustaceans that you know, pink salmon eat, they depend on it, eat a lot. So if the Bering Sea warms up faster than it would have, if it was slow, maybe crab have time to adapt. Maybe fish have time to adapt. Maybe they can move. But if it happens too fast, the curve is too steep, then maybe they won't be able to adapt and they're going to die. But it's certainly an awareness in the industry. Uh, there's several groups in the industry, uh, Alaska Marine Conservation Council and several of the national groups that have focused on ocean acidification and greenhouse gas emissions. And I think it's, it's a trend in the industry becoming more and more aware of it. And I think this is a very positive step for during the education process uh, the young people that will be our future fishermen and uh, community members. Multiple things will come into effect, mainly their food source and them being a cold water species. And if that starts even changing a couple degrees um, on a consistent basis, is probably going to have serious uh, impact on our fisheries. But considering all the other things that are going on right now that are threatening our fisheries, you know, we might not even get to that point. Effects where we saw ocean acidification actually affecting our economy is that some of that acidified water washing into hatcheries and oyster hatcheries. Economics is always a part of the decision process and you refer to KEA, I and mean, there's a situation where the economics lined up with conservation and they both worked hand in hand. We are have cheaper energy prices because we're using renewable resources. Climate change drives up costs, for operating costs for both fishermen and processors. If you're gonna buy a web, that's basically made out of petroleum products and lines are made out of petroleum products. Everything costs more so it goes into your margins so it makes less money. So That's the typical human condition, only taking action when being placed between a rock and a hard place and um, trying to be proactive rather than reactive I think is a, a, a step in the right direction. It's just be aware of, of what you're doing. Don't do something just because that's what everyone else does, or it's you see on TV, or it's cool. Um, think about, you know, it, is this utilization of energy that I'm doing, do I need to do it, do I want to do it, or 